Plan A was to visit here the same day I went to Lafayette Pioneer Cemetery. Plan A included a shooting partner, which I didn't have at either location. There was no Plan B, so I chose to fly solo, even after the tree cave canopy image hit my vision. Unlike Lafayette Pioneer Cemetery, Masonic No. 3 in McMinnville, Oregon had a quarter mile driveway. The overcast sky, mid-thirties temperature, and the lingering sense of dread did me no favors. My intended co-pilot chose a lame excuse to bail and was replaced by my overactive imagination. Luckily, I gathered up the courage to go it alone as I have found fear rarely lives up to its reputation. The devastating vandalism I had not known prior and the aggressive acts concerned me. Would the groundskeeper or any unseen energies think I was there to wreak havoc as well? I tried my best to keep it together, but an incident in just a moment jarred my nerves. Before we get to that, Masonic Cemetery Lafayette No. 3 was founded in the mid-1850s on a hilltop in Yamhill County. Absolutely zero creep factor to this tree here. Zero. My right shirt sleeve is pinched, pulled by something. What is it doing? Documenting. Another tug on my sleeve. Do research on me. For the remaining time of this coverage, I hear footsteps and catch movement peripherally. I considered scrapping this footage and possibly attempting a second time here, but I was already here. And also the reality I was far from the sole exit, I decided to press on and ignore the unexplainables. One of the reviews for the cemetery had claims ghostly children followed her around. Another reviewer claimed these grounds to be enchanted, claiming interactions with sprites and spirit guides. There's some speculation over whether the alleged witch, Anna Marple, mentioned in the last episode, if Anna haunts the Pioneer Cemetery and or this one. Also, her executed murderer's son's interment is here. Though Richard Marple's grave does not have a marker, David Corker, the man he murdered, does and is buried here. Note that every shift and swivel in my terrible coverage indicates a sight or sound that spooks me. For that, I humbly apologize. I cut the footage down from the 24 minute single take to the current runtime of just 6 minutes. The shed 18 minutes were much, much worse. I noticed something very odd when removing my iron talisman from my pocket. This iron is 
really hot. I rechecked the talisman to find it cool to the touch again as it should in 40 degree weather. Now, but it was hot just a minute ago.